It's TV school time. University of Iowa in association with WOI TV presents another program in the Iowa TV School Time series, Adventures in Art. Today's topic, Printing Patterns. Your teacher is Mr. Vern Thompson of the State University of Iowa. Hi there, come on in. Welcome once again to Adventures in Art. Boy, we're really going to have a whole lot of fun today, boys and girls. I think we've really got a very exciting project for you today. It's printing patterns. You know there are an awful lot of uses for printing patterns. Maybe you don't exactly know what a pattern is, but I'm going to have one of the boys right here in our classroom today tell us in just a couple of minutes exactly what a pattern is. But first of all, I'd like to tell you boys and girls a little bit about why we would want to make patterns because I don't think really that an art project is very meaningful unless it does give us something that we can use. Well, we can use, for example, patterns just as a decoration, can't we? We could put a very, very attractive pattern in a frame and put it on the wall. Or we could think of some uses for the pattern that would be very, very helpful to us. And maybe save us some money. But one thing that's very, very important, and that's this. We want to make our patterns be all our own, not somebody else's. Use our own imaginations. Because our imagination, well, we can do just about anything that we can imagine, can't we? So let's really use our imaginations all during the program today and be thinking not only about why we're making printings and printing patterns, but what we can use them for, as well as some new materials that you might be able to think of, okay? Well, first of all, let's take a look at this. Here is a person who was very, very interested in a stamp book. And so, rather than going downtown and buying one, this person really decided to make a very, very nice one just by using construction paper and also using the printed <coughs> pattern design that she put right here on the cover. And so you can see that this cover has been pasted right on. And let's take a look in the inside. You can see that there are lots of pages, plenty of pages in the book, so that there will be a lot of room for plenty of stamps. You'll notice just for a second now, let's take a look at the design because that's the most important part of this stamp book, the design on the cover. You'll notice that this real bright color that runs right down here is really a very bright color, too. It's red. And the color of paper that's behind it actually is gray. And these little kind of snaky lines back here were made with yarn, and they're yellow. And you'll notice that up at the top, printed along there, it says stamps. Well, that's one use. One use for printing patterns. Now let's take a look at another. I think we can really decorate boxes in a very, very attractive way. You'll notice that this package has a very nice design on it, and this design was made 
by a girl right in the classroom. And you know, it's kind of funny, but this really was a great big tree. But when we got it all wrapped up, she just couldn't see the tree at all. But I think the design is very, very interesting. Look over here on this side. All the sides are just a little bit different, but I think it really makes a very pleasing pattern. Let's take a look now at a great big box, should we? Here's another one made with some other things. But I want you to see this big box. Isn't that lovely? And this person, I think, really had a lot of fun making it. As a matter of fact, we took seven whole periods on this project. And you know, when the boys and girls came back the eighth day, they still wanted to work on patterns some more. And a lot of them said, well, I've just been kind of experimenting. And they wanted to make some more and some more and some more. Because you'll notice that right here in this design, there are some things you can see here that you didn't see in the others. Look at these little circles. Well, in just a couple of seconds, we'll find out how those were made. And then these lines running up here were made just with yarn and pieces of string. Red, that kind of little shimmery stuff right back in the back, actually it's just paint that was put on by using a piece of sponge. Well, we've talked about what the uses are for this project. Now let's actually go over and talk to someone who's been working on a pattern, a nice design, and he is actually making the cover for a book. So let's go over and take a look now at Tommy's work. Why don't we just kind of move right away, tell the boys and girls at home just exactly what is a pattern. Well, it's something that's repeated over and over again. Uh-huh. Uh, could you give me an example, uh, say, of a pattern other than the kind that we've been making here that would decorate a box? <coughs> well, sponges and... Uh, no, wait a minute, Tommy. Now, not, not different materials that we can use, but actually a different use for patterns. Is there any place else that you find patterns? Yes, I found, well, I've got one on my shirt, on cloth, uh -huh. and uh, on paper. Right. How about this one? That's Should we show this one to them? Yeah. Here's one right here that we found that we thought was a terrific pattern. You'll notice that these are just kind of like little windows, aren't they? And they're all different colors. There are some brown ones, some pink ones, and some yellow ones with a little bit of orange in them. You'll notice that this cover for this particular magazine is actually a pattern because it's using the same shapes over and over. Isn't that right, Tommy? Mm -hmm. Now, the one, I think, of the, of the most important things about this is that they aren't all the same color, are they? Yes. Well, that just shows us one other way that we can make a design. It isn't always necessary, boys and girls, that we use exactly the same color. And I think that Tommy can show us just for a couple of seconds, exactly how he made this design. First of all, why don't you just hold this up and tell the boys and girls what these particular things are and then actually make a few prints on the back of that piece of paper. Would you do that? All right. Well, um, these, the black, big black marks, are made with a simple, ordinary clothespin. And then the little circles are made with a, a little thing that comes on crayon so that... Uh, your fingers won't slip and get all dirty. Mm -hmm. And then um, these were made with the end of a pencil. In other words, this, this, tiniest, this tiniest little circle right here, all you did was just dip this in the paint and then put that on. Is that right? Yes. How about, uh, how about using that clothespin and one or two of these other materials, Tommy, and just very quickly making us a different design, again using the same clothespin. Could you do that? Mm -hmm. All right. You notice that we have a pan there, and the boys and girls just put their paint right in the pan. Oh, that's a good idea. Sure. Now this time, instead of putting all of the close pins the same way, Tommy has decided to turn right side up and then upside down. What do you suppose caused that right there, Tommy? That right there. My fingers. So that's one thing you really have to be careful about, isn't it? Uh, yes. You have to be careful of your fingers so that you don't get any of the paint where you don't want it. Well, let's just take a look at that for a second. Now, right away, boys and girls, you can see that this is quite a bit different. Let's take a look at this one first, and then let's turn it over now, should we? See the difference? The design actually is, of course, different than it would be this way. 
and it's different when it's held this way. Well, there are different colors that you could work in there, Tommy, and I suppose you could also work in some of these other materials too, couldn't mm -hmm. you? How about, uh, how about just quickly showing us what kind of a little design that fork would make? Could you do that for us? Sure. And that's just a, a plastic fork. And we can see that it really does make a very interesting design. Now, one thing that's very important, of course, just like when we're working in any medium, whether it be crayon or paint or chalk, What's one thing that's very important as far as the color of the paper and the color that we put on the paper, Tommy? Contrast, that's what you call it. Well, um, on this purple piece of paper, I would put a color that showed up. Now, if this was black, well, then I'd put a white or a light color. Uh -huh. If this was yellow, well, then I'd put black or a dark color that would blend in. I mean, you Really know. make contrast yes. so you'd really be able to see it. Well, I think we've really learned quite a bit from Tommy. So, Tommy, why don't you go ahead now, and you'll probably want to let this one dry, and maybe what you'd like to do is, is kind of experiment with maybe another one, and maybe use some of these other materials that you might have here, a cork, or one of these other, oh, what would you call this thing? I guess this is what you wrap wire around, and it's made of wood. Maybe you could get some interesting designs with that, so that you'd really have a choice, okay? Yeah. Fine, you're doing a very nice job. Now let's move over here and talk to Elaine. And Elaine is using different things. She is not using the household objects. Tommy was using things that you could find around the house. Bottle tops and bottle caps. Well, I'll bet you at home can think of some very interesting things that might work. And you'd be surprised. Anything, actually, that has a flat surface on it, you can print with it. And it's really fun to kind of see what kind of a design it'll make. Have you ever done uh, what I used to do in school? I would take a, a coin, you know, maybe a 50 cent piece. Well, maybe you don't have a 50 cent piece, but I used to, once in a while, when I'd have a 50 cent piece, I'd take that coin, and then I'd put it in some ink, and then I'd take the coin and press it down on the paper, and when I lifted the coin up, of course, you'd get an impression of it, wouldn't you? Well, that's exactly what we're doing. On there, we are making patterns with these individual designs. So now let's look at Elaine. And I noticed that she's just finishing up a star over here. Why don't you make another one for us so we can see how you made that one? Could you just tell the boys and girls as you're working exactly how you're doing it and what you're using? Well, I take this piece of cardboard here and um, dip it in the blue paint or any color you want to use. Uh -huh. And then I lay it down um, on a piece of paper and pick it up again and lay it crossways and there you have your X and then you lay, lay it an another way and there you have your star. Fine, and all that is is just a piece of cardboard. You see that? And of course, if she wanted to make a great big star, well, all you'd have to do is just have three or four different sizes of cardboard here and you could really make some interesting designs. You know, I'll bet you could make a design that would run the whole length of the paper just by doing the same thing. Now, what's really fun, boys and girls, is this. If you have a piece of cardboard, not only try it on the edge, but also you could cut out some shapes out of the cardboard, couldn't you? Sure, you could cut out different shapes, and then you could put them down on the paper. And you'll notice, why don't you tell them exactly what you could do with this, for example, Elaine? Well, you could make, oh, rough shapes out of This has sandpaper on the bottom. Uh -huh. I think you could probably make something rough out of it. Sure, it'd really give you an interesting texture, wouldn't it? Let's take a look at that a little bit closer, should we? You'll notice that all it is is just a piece of wood, and then attached to the piece of wood is a little dowel. And that dowel, of course, just serves the purpose of being able to hold on to it. And we just put a piece of sandpaper on here, but heavens, I'll bet you could think of maybe 15 or 20 other different things that would be just as much fun to print with. You know, I haven't seen what sandpaper will do, have you? No, I haven't. I haven't either. Let's, let's try it, should we, and see what kind of a design we can get. Let's just use a piece of Tommy's paper here. We can just set that there. And I think maybe a dark color would probably be best, don't you? Mm-hmm. I really don't... I don't know if this will work or not. Ooh, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Huh? Look at that. 
You'll notice that it does give a kind of a speckly look. Just about, well, not actually what you think sandpaper would look like. And of course, if you're careful, you can print right on top of the same design. Yeah. Now, you could use a different color, maybe put a, a, a different piece of sandpaper on there, and then print a different color in there. So that really looks like it would be a lot of fun. Well, now I know how you've made this and how we could work with something like that, but how did you happen to make this great big swath of color down there? Well, I took it and um, I took this grayer here and, <coughs> and rolled it in the yellow paint, and then I just put it up, rolled it up the um, well, paper. Uh-huh. I saw you go, ooh, when you got that paint on you. Will it come off? Yes, it will. I noticed that you got some down here. Have you ever had paint on your clothes before? Yeah. Well, this is just tempera paint, boys and girls. So she just saying ooh, kind of like that, because it's really just funny. It'll come off very easily. I've had paint all over my hands. We have claws right down here. And once in a while, when we get too much on our, uh, either on the tool that we're working with or on our hands, just reach down and wipe our hands off, and it'll wash off very, very easily. Well, I think you're doing a fine job, Elaine. So you just keep going right at it there. And are you having fun? Yes, I am. Fine. Now, let's see what's going on over here. Now, I noticed that Rebecca is using quite a few different materials. First of all, one thing that we want to always remember, Rebecca, is that we don't want to get our design too cluttered, do we? No, except on um, this, there's too much paint in it. Uh-huh. In other words, when you, when you use this ruler up here while you had a little bit too much paint on it, well, another thing that you'd probably have to be, well, let's tell the boys and girls at home first. You'll notice that we were using right here just a plain rolling pin. And then, uh, what's this on the rolling pin? Why don't you tell the boys and girls? Well, this is a piece of yarn. And then we took um, a stapler and stapled this in uh, here and on uh, there. And we just rolled it around. Uh-huh. And then when you put it on the paper, you actually do just get the same kind of design as you have on there. Now, one thing that you'd have to be careful about and I think that's what happened here, Rebecca, is that your yarn, you see, got a little bit too wet. And because it got so wet and soggy, it flattened out. And then when it flattens out, you see, then it'll get down on here and you actually begin to pick up some of the paint that's already on the roller. You know, another very easy way to do this, boys and girls, would be to just, if you don't have a whole lot of rolling pins, and golly, I don't know any school that has a whole lot of them around, or maybe your mother still likes to use hers, we can find a substitute. All we have to do is just find a, a, one of these tubes, you know, that come in, in wrapping paper sometimes. And you can just take that and wrap the yarn around it or the string, whichever you'd prefer to use. And when you wrap it around there, you'll get exactly the same effect as by using this rolling pin. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we take this piece of paper and put this over here? Why don't you uh, actually uh, just tack that right up on the board, would you? And I'll just stand right here for a second and see if I can find a piece of paper here. Fine. Now let's take this piece of paper and I'd like to show you the kind of a design that you can make with this particular kind of a material. I could take a piece of yarn and that ought to be just about long enough. And here are the scissors. And you notice that it is kind of messy just on your particular table, though, and it can be cleaned up very, very easily. Now that I have the yarn, all I do is just roll it out like this, and then take and put it right here, and then I have a stapler. And I take the stapler and just staple that right down, and then just roll this right around on here. Now I could come on back, couldn't I? and maybe get a different kind of design this time. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. All right, let's try it and see what happens. You know, that's really the fun of working with these materials because you never do know just exactly what kind of a design you're going to get, do you? Now, one thing that's very important when you're doing this is that you have to be careful to not get too much paint. What, what you really want to do now, Rebecca, is just try and keep the paint only on the yarn. So kind of keep it out of the real heavy paint there, okay? That's fine. Now let's try that and see what happens, okay? Now you watch. Yes, that's coming along fine. 
very nice. You notice how we kind of got a little zigzaggy line in there? Maybe it might need a little bit more paint now. Well, maybe not. You try it. Fine. She just rolls it down over there. Let me pull this this way a little bit for you. There. Now, just with the addition of a couple more colors in there, I'm sure that she'd really begin to have a whole lot of fun working on this particular design. Is this the first one you've ever made, Rebecca? No, I made another one. Oh, golly. I know that she's made a whole lot of them. How many did you make in school? As I recall, you made just about the most of anybody. Okay. So she was really having fun. Well, why don't you go ahead and finish what you're doing, and we'll be back in just a few minutes and see how you're coming along. Well, you can see that there are all kinds of things happen when you're working with these materials. You know the temper paint. Don't let it scare you out, because I have it on my hands right now, but remember that it will come off very, very easily. And we have our quarters are just a little bit cramped here, but I'll bet in your schoolroom or in your house, you have a nice big table that you could work at. And of course, if you just put plenty of newspapers down, and you really do have to have newspapers, because what they do is this. If you don't have newspapers underneath your printing, when you print down with the object, it can't really kind of push down in like you do when you lie down in the sand. So you want to make sure that you have, oh, about four or five thickness of newspaper underneath your printing, and then when you print, it'll really print a real nice little design. Well, I thought it'd be kind of fun, just for you boys and girls, to see some of the things that we actually did do in our schoolroom. So right here I have, oh, about 15 or 20 very, very nice designs that the boys and girls did at our University Experimental Elementary School. So why don't you take a look, okay? And as we're looking, as we're looking now, would you please try and do this? Would you kind of think what kind of a design you would be making using a certain material and all of the different ways you could use it? Let's look at this one. See this black design right here? This is on an orange piece of paper with a little white circle here. Now let's see how this little black design right here has been used again, should we? in a completely different way. Cardboard was used along here. Of course, you could use a piece of string or yarn, couldn't you? This is black on red. This is black, this is white, and this is white. Now, let's see how that same design again was used in a completely different way, should we? Here we are. Again, this same design, but look how much difference there is. Quite a bit, isn't there? There it is again, but completely different. Now, what I'm trying to do now, boys and girls, is show you how even though you have to use the same material, you can all have a different design. This is a very beautiful blue background with a red and an orange stripe and black and white. Now let's take a look at another. Now this is a little bit different, isn't it? You'll notice that this round right here, this was made by using a cork. These things right here. And then this was a great big pencil, and this just a piece of cardboard. Can you think how that was made? Sure you can. It's just yarn and string. A gray background, and then red running up through here, and then some yellow down around here, and then little spots of blue. Here's another one using string. Now let's look at these a little bit quicker so that you really get an idea of all of the thousands of different kinds you could make. Close pins. Paper and little pieces of cardboard. Close pins, but in a completely different way. Pieces of cardboard and the bottom of a milk bottle. And a little thing that I really don't know exactly what it was, but one of the boys just brought it into school and we had a whole lot of fun when we were working with it. Now let's look at these real quick. How about this one right here? Huh? Again with the bottom of a box. Here, 
a brayer, the roller down here with little spots. The bottom of a Band-Aid box. Cardboard used in different ways and some more string. So boy, I guess you can see right now that there are just thousands of different designs, patterns that you can make. Remember some of the important things. Using different materials. Any materials that you can find at home that you think will print. And boy, the boys and girls in our room just brought little sacks, almost every one of them, to school, and we used all kinds of different materials. And I think for about the first two days, the boys and girls just had fun working out their patterns. But remember that your design is very important, and try and keep it rather simple. Don't use more than, oh, I would say, three different materials at any one time. Because if you do, it begins to get a little bit too cluttered, and the design isn't, I don't think, as nice. Well, let's go around now and see how the boys and girls have been coming along. Tommy, which one of these did you decide that you might like to use? Oh, well. you really have some nice ones. This is kind of a, a little tree, isn't it? And this one? Which one did you think you might like to use for a cover? Well, um, I, I like them both uh, <coughs> about the same. <coughs> oh, I notice you're, but, uh, you're using a different kind down here, aren't you? Yes. I'm not finished with that one. Uh-huh. Well, this could use a little bit more, don't you think? Yes. Okay. You just go ahead and finish up this one. And I think Tommy is really smart to make more than one, because then he has really a good choice, doesn't he? And I noticed that you have yours all wrapped with a piece of paper that you've finished. Say, do you suppose, do you know where that big piece of paper is, the rest of it, to this piece? Have you got it down here? Right Fine. Down here. I didn't think that piece was that big. You notice that here is the piece of paper right here that was used using the brayer, and here is the package. And I think you did a very, very nice job, Elaine. Now let's go over and take a look at Rebecca and see how she's coming along. Well, I noticed that you did use that one piece that you finished, and I think it came out very, very well. You notice that the design is overall pattern, the use of corrugated paper right in here, and of course, you could take the corrugated paper and roll that right around on the rolling pin, the same as you were doing with the yarn. And this is the other one that you started second. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Fine. Well, I think this is really going to be a very interesting and exciting design, too, Rebecca. Thank you very much, boys and girls. I think we really had a lot of fun today, and I hope you have a lot of fun working with your patterns. So until I see you next week, goodbye and have fun. Today, your teacher has been Mr. Vern Thompson of the State University of Iowa. Adventures in Art is produced for Iowa TV School Time by the State University of Iowa. Iowa TV School Time is presented daily, Monday through Friday, by the Iowa Joint Committee for Educational Television. This program is made possible through the cooperation of the elementary school and the television center of the State University of Iowa.